For talking health matters now, World Sickle Cell Day, which is marked on the 19th of June, was established by the United Nations General Assembly in 2008 in order to increase their awareness about the sickle cell disease and its care among the public. Sickle cell anemia is a genetic red blood cell disorder, and the International Awareness Day is observed with the goal to increase public knowledge about the challenges experienced by patients and their families and caregivers. Now, of course, we're joined by uh, joining me in the studio to speak more about this is a content creator, sickle cell advocacy and management initiative at Biomi Uyilami. Thank you very much at this time for joining us and speaking on this. Thank you very much. All right, so in all of this now, let's talk about the day. How, what does this day mean to you? Thank you very much. Like you, I'd like you for starting with the historical perspective of this. Telling us that the United Nations instituted this day in 2008. And so, starting from June 19, 2009, we started celebrating this day. This year is the 12th year of celebrating this day. And what do we do on this day? We have activities that we use to create awareness about what sickle cell is in Nigeria and across the world. So, it's not just limited to Nigeria. So, what do we Nonprofits are doing a lot that they can do. They do awareness, they create, they go to schools, they go to marketplaces to tell people about what sickle cell is. However, that can only go so far. We need the government to come into this space. And so that is why we cannot but talk about this. When you celebrate in Nigeria, about the treatment of, um, uh, I would like to use the word warriors rather than using the word uh, sickle cell carriers. Are you concerned about the treatment meted out uh, to warriors in this part of the world? Yes, yeah, so we have, in Nigeria, we have 4 million, that's estimated, and that population is definitely more than the population of some states in Nigeria. How do when you go to hospitals, do we have enough facilities to take care of these people? That is one of the issues that we have to contend with today. Now, we talk about routine medications. Now, routine medications are just medications that, like your food, you have to take every day, mm. not missing it. But how many of these people can afford these drugs? We are talking about multivitamins. We are talking about little things like parastamol. But how many of these people can afford it? And government coming to help these people get these drugs. NGOs, some NGOs do this, they subsidize these drugs, some give it for free. However, it still does not reach the population, it still does not reach many rural areas. So that is why government needs to come into this space so that we can have policies, so that government can bring in funds that can help us get probably to primary health care centers. We work to and get and get health care when it comes to sickle cell so that's what we are talking about okay so you're talking about government com coming into um, this space what are the specifics now is beyond government coming in to um, give out monies to ensure that drugs are uh, purchased uh, easily and cheaply what are the specifics that you want the government to do when coming into this space Agreed. Two critical. Now, number one is called newborn screening policy. What does newborn screening policy mean? It means it's a it's a public policy, a public health policy that ensures that government ensures that a child, as soon as that child is born, in the first 28 days of his life or her life, that child will be tested to know if he lives with sickle cell or not. And that will even make to start taking care of the child from that point on. So the child does not have to get to 10 years old, 15 years old, before we got to know that he carries the sickle cell disorder in his body. That is one. Number two, and let me tell, let me make the information that Zambia has already started that policy this year. They started that policy this year. Number two is education. We cannot talk about this enough. We need to cascade education of genetics. We to primary schools. We need our children to know these things from the world go. When they know that this is my genotype, 
they can start being educated. So it's not on the, it's not a year for them to get married that they are not going to be knowing about sickle cell, that they are going to be knowing about genotype compatibility. These things are already too late by then. So, but if we start from primary school, secondary school, everywhere you go to, you get to hear about sickle cell. It goes away helping you by so that you can make informed decision. We don't want to get to a point where we are going to be punishing people hmm. for getting married to somebody that they like. We don't want to force people, we don't want to compel people that you must not marry this, you must not marry this person, you must not marry that person. It doesn't work that way. We know about the right to free association. However, if you get people educated from childhood, they can start making this decision early. So that's the way. All right, uh, Bayo Amir Lami, thank you so much for talking to us on this. Thank you. Thank you very much.